This is iPad mini. We want it to be smaller such that it could be thinner and lighter, as you can see, but not so small that it stops being incredibly usable because the iPad is the most usable of all these devices. So let's look at it side by side. Here's current iPad 2 next to the iPad mini. The iPad 2 is 9.7 inches on the diagonal, iPad mini 7.9. So that's easy to remember, right? 9.7, 7.9. All of the software created for iPad all works on the iPad mini, unchanged. So whether you love it or you hate it, whether you think it's exciting or you're skeptical, all valid feelings, by the way, I think it's undeniable at this point that the iPad OS 26 update is one of the most, if not the most ambitious yet. So much so, I argued in a previous video that it reinvents the iPad as a product. Uh, it's a 55 minute video. I go over the history of the iPad, all the important features and Mac adaptations, and also uh, one of Apple's you know, software executives going over why the evolution of the iPad has been a carefully considered journey, yada, yada, yada. It's a great video. I'm not just sort of you know, shamelessly plugging. I worked really hard on it. So it's definitely worth your while if you're into this operating system or this update. So I'll link that below. But I also mention it to say that I use the iPad Pro 13 inch here, as you can see, to demo all of these new features um, because not only is it the best hardware, but it has the most expansive, gorgeous display, I might add, which takes advantage of these new uh, windowing features like this fill and arrange quad mode that we have here. Uh, but with that said, how does this experience translate to a smaller display? And I'm not just talking the iPad Pro 11 inch, Air 11 inch, 11th gen, 10.9 inch, or even uh, the like 10.2 uh, inch or so if you want to compare the eighth gen or the ninth gen because those support these new features too. No, I'm talking about the iPad mini, which I was shocked to learn got a lot of these new features. I thought that they were gonna water it down more. I thought that the iPad mini experience is gonna be unadulterated, you know, very, you know, sort of iPad first gen like or iPad mini first gen like, like we have right here. I have this here to sort of remind us of the experience we've had with the iPad mini since its inception 13 years ago. Very basic, just a smaller scale iPad. That was the big deal here. They sort of shrunk it properly without compromising the experience you got with the iPad first gen and the iPad 2 and the iPad 3. Um, and then of course the iPad 4 that launched alongside it. But yeah, all of this to say, how does this new, you know, operating system that has floating windows and all these new crazy multitasking features and a menu bar, how does that work on here? Is it a weird experience? Was it the right move? Well, that is the question we're going to answer today because what I can say right now is the experience, at least compared to the iPad Pro and Air and the 11th gen, is not one-to-one -one with this operating system. Apple definitely had to make some changes with this, but it's an interesting experience and I want to share you know, what I think as I go along here with you. All right, so first up, let's talk about the new windowing mechanics with iPadOS 26 at this display size, 8.4 inches here. Uh, I'm also gonna be holding the iPad mini like this because it's the most natural way, at least in my book, to hold it. Sure, I use it on the table flat sometimes, but I'm often just holding it like this or with one hand too, and I'll have the pencil over here just in case we need it, but that'll probably come later. Anyway, so let's uh, move the windows around here in portrait, you know, it works pretty well. There isn't as much space to sort of do this, but it works surprisingly well. Same with the resizing, it's very, very smooth and um, also the flicking as well works. But you know, again, you don't have as much space here to do that. And as you can see, if you rotate the orientation, it sort of kicks you out of that like split view and back into sort of free floating mode. But let's flick these back left and right. Uh, I will say off camera, I was struggling with some of the UI elements, like my fingers were kind of touching things that I didn't want them to, sort of preventing me from moving the windows around, but it's probably a skill issue, but also something to keep in mind. The UI is a lot more cramped, but still it works pretty well here. I can still kind of grab onto windows pretty easily and also toggle this new stoplight navigation here, which can also bring me full screen with like that and also minimize. But yeah, um, so far, even though the screen is much smaller here, all of the windowing features work pretty well in terms of you know moving around and resizing and also toggling that control here and the other menu items and whatever. Um, but let's introduce some more windows and see how this goes. 
All right, so we have some more windows here, quite the variety with Safari still. We got YouTube open, we also have iMessage and Notion. And I also want to mention here, there is no stage manager going on. If I bring these windows over to the left here, as you can see, the stage manager menu is not popping up. It doesn't show up in Control Center either. So I figure that uh, they just couldn't make it work with this display size. Processor is not the issue. This has the A17 Pro in it, which is definitely on par with the A12X and Z in the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros that can support this feature. Um, so this is seemingly a display size limitation, but nonetheless, they're letting you do these floating windows and also the fill and arrange sort of Mac-like adaptation here. So first up, let's try a split screen, which we did a minute ago. It works as you would imagine here, just fine, super smooth. You can also flick things left and right like I showed earlier here and also disengage if I can do that. Again, it's a bit of a learning curve and also, you know, the UI is just interesting here uh, at this size. So, you know, we are experiencing this as it goes along. Uh, it isn't a perfect experience by any means, but it's definitely doable. But again, this is a learning curve even for me. Uh, but let's go into the triple view mode here. So let's see what it brings up. So let's go triple. And here we go. We have three different windows here. And I really like this. This reminds me of having like three small iPhones next to each other. So you can scroll through this article here. You can scroll through the YouTube comments or YouTube on here, watch a video, and also scroll through your Notion or whatever apps you have open here. So that's pretty nice. You can also resize just a little bit. Actually, not at all in this case. In other cases, I found you could. But here, it's pretty much fixed. Actually, yes, you can, but it sort of overlaps over the window next to it, which we will continue to see as this uh, demo goes on here. Um, let's also see what this looks like in portrait mode, and let's try to get it into that triple view here, because again, it sort of brings you back into free floating mode. Here we go. Uh, these windows sort of overlap on each other because I think they figured there's no possible way you can see everything, you know, super skinny. So that's interesting. This is where the iPad mini experience sort of falls apart in a way, but I will say some orientations work better than others here. So don't quite give up on portrait mode here yet. So let's try the quad uh, situation here with portrait mode. And as you can see, like I said, um, don't give up on the portrait mode because it really does work well here for four apps. As you can see here, you get sort of these really small windows, but it, they work. You can see what you're doing here. You can actually scroll through, watch a video, respond to a message here if you want, no problem. And um, I'm really a big fan of this. So clearly there are modes that work better than others. You can kind of sort of resize. Actually, no, you can't. The same thing goes for uh, the triple mode, I guess, in portrait. Okay, so let's try that quad view in landscape here. And as you can see, we do have a little more freedom in terms of resizing, but you still get that overlap here because it just cannot scale everything to fit like this, if that makes sense here. So just like with portrait with three windows, clearly in landscape, four windows is not the most ideal situation. You can do it here. However, if we turn the orientation here and reset the windows and go back, into that quad mode, you actually get quite a nice view here, just like, again, we do with three windows in uh, landscape. Let's try that again. So we'll reset and like, let's go to that little fill and arrange thing again and boom. So, you know, the iPad mini brings unique capabilities with regard to multitasking or the new windowing modes, depending on the orientation. Whereas with bigger iPads, it doesn't matter as much, but here, I think you get some unique usage cases here, which is exciting again at this form factor, at this size, and this may give us a glimpse into what a foldable iPhone, iPad hybrid might look like. But anyway, before we continue with the video here, I gotta show you something that basically turns you into the main character of your own cinematic B-roll. This is the Hover Air X1 Pro Max, and it's easily the most fun I've had with the camera in a while. It's basically a drone, but without the whole learning curve, controller, or awkward piloting. It's iPhone level simple. You just unfold it, hit a button, and it literally takes off from your hand. No phone required, no setup delay, just instant autonomous flight. And once it's up there, it just starts tracking you. It follows you from the front, the side, and even keeps you in the center of the frame if you're running or biking. It's shockingly smooth thanks to built-in stabilization, a two-axis gimbal, and horizon leveling. It honestly feels like having your own personal camera crew in your backpack. It's nuts. So far, I've used it for filming dynamic shots like this bird's eye view clip and this sick revolve or orbit shot that I showed earlier. 
all this to say, I definitely think I'm going to be incorporating this kind of footage into day in the life content. You know, who knows? Regardless though, every time the footage just looks way more polished than I expected from something this small and convenient. It even records 8K, so you've got room to crop in or reframe your shots without losing much detail. Anyway, this thing is genuinely so sick, and I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to check it out. And definitely don't miss out on the best deals on Hover Air. Enjoy up to 30% off from July 8th to July 11th. But anyway, back to the video here. Next, I want to talk about the menu bar, which is another great Mac adaptation to the iPad. And as you can see, it works pretty well in an app like Pages here in Landscape. It's still a bit small. I also recommend using the Apple Pencil, specifically the Apple Pencil Pro with the A17 Pro iPad Mini with Apple Pencil Hover, as you can see here, quite the sentence, but it works really great. And of course, if you start editing here, if I can do that, you get access to a lot of different tools and edit and insert and format and whatnot here. Um, you also can access it in portrait mode, which I think has its own advantage in sort of giving you a whole list without sort of having you scroll a bit here. So I think you still kind of have to with some of these. Yeah, but at least you get more vertical space for the menu to sort of come out or pop out or scale. Whereas in landscape here, as you can see, there's just less room for that. So you have to scroll a little bit more, um, but that is interesting. But yeah, it works pretty well. Just like the windowing, just like this toggle here, it's just smaller, but not too, too small. We can also demo this in Safari. Let's go full screen here. It's the same deal, you know, pretty decent or easy to access in uh, landscape mode and also fairly nice in portrait mode as well, giving you more uh, sort of room to scale an entire menu or different, you know, toggles here or whatnot. Um, so yeah, no complaints for me. It's a pretty great experience across the board, especially for apps like uh, files, if I can open it here. Let's go full screen there. Yeah, this is really helpful if you wanna navigate or you know just sort of get to settings that may not be as obvious. So just like with bigger iPads, I would say, the menu bar is a much needed, great, you know, addition to the operating system, even though, again, it scales quite a bit smaller than what you might be used to on a Mac or a bigger iPad. And yeah, again, the menu bar is just so helpful getting you access to tools that are sort of out of the way or just sort of, you know, not abundantly or apparently obvious or in front of you. You can also use the help tab to type in, you know, what you want to find, you know, if you don't know what drop down it's in. So I'm excited to see this across the board and also in creative apps or other apps where, you know, you're already struggling with the lack of screen real estate, of course, with the, you know, great compromise or benefit of this, you know, small scale tablet that you put in your pocket, but still the menu bar will sort of help with that, I think. Another great iPad OS 26 feature that is just so interesting to demo at this size is adding a folder to your dock, which I have done here with the downloads folder. So I can open that up here and it just fans out and shows me some of my recent downloads. I love this and it makes a lot of sense at a bigger form factor, you know, 13 inches, 11 inches, but here it's definitely interesting, but I think it's very welcome here. Um, obviously this isn't the most ideal setup, but I love using Gmail and Safari, you know, kill me, whatever, I don't care. But the point is I drag a lot of files in and out of windows like this. So for example, I can copy a picture here and it works just as well as it would um, on my iPad Pro. I think it would be a better experience if I did it full screen. So let's try that again here. So I have more room, oops, let me delete that. And then I can bring the dock up here, go back there, drag the picture in. So definitely better if you're full screen with this uh, size of an iPad, you could probably get away with it more windowed with the iPad Pro or iPad Air, especially at 13 inches here. I can also do the same thing in messages, which is a little easier here since the UI is more you know, friendly at this size. So I can drag this photo in here. Oops, it's thinking I wanna go into Safari again. Let me minimize that here with the navigator thing. And let's try that again. Drag the uh, picture in here. I got the plus and boom, I'm ready to send that. So I think that's great. Um, without having to go into files and do a split screen and whatever else. The fact that I can just go to my most recently downloaded files here and drag them into any app, notes, messages, you know, Safari like that specifically is just fabulous. So clearly Apple has been thoughtful about how, you know, this would show up and how, you know, you could take advantage of it even at this small form factor. This feature is also a great segue into the preview app, which I am a huge fan of, especially on here because 
you know, if you want to have a companion iPad to your Mac, maybe you don't want a huge iPad, even an 11 inch might be too big for you and you want to be able to mark up PDFs and whatever else, having, you know, pretty much full fledged preview on your iPad is just wonderful here. So as you can see, I open that up straight from the downloads folder. I can mark up this PDF here like so, no problem, just like you can in notes or I can autofill, whatever else. So that is just lovely, especially in full screen, which we can do here. So this is great if you want to annotate a document or you know fill something out, whatever. Um, you also can go back to the preview window here and edit pictures, not like you can in photos necessarily, that's more of a rich experience. So if you wanna like do some tweaks with the color and whatnot, I'd go there. But if you wanna do like a quick rotate or you wanna do a quick crop or something like that, this is the place to do it. Um, you also are able to export your photos um, at different sizes. So if you want to, you know, upload a photo that is below a certain megabyte count, you know, to the DMV or government website or YouTube or whatever, where you can't, you know, have the full size image, you can change that size here. As you can see here with this little toggle, you can also change the format. So this is super useful and they made it into a proper iPad like experience uh, without sort of removing the capability that you would get with your Mac. So I'm a huge fan of that. And again, like I said, in my full iPad OS 26 video, it incorporates, you know, whatever files you want to view um, or, or it incorporates or, or mixes the files app into this, which is unlike the Mac. So it's a very unique experience. But yeah, I really, really enjoy this uh, experience here, especially again, as somebody who used the iPad mini uh, for a while as a companion device, you know, as sort of an iPad, you know, my, my only iPad really, because I was sort of fed up with iPad OS on the iPad Air and the iPad Pro, it just didn't make any sense. But now that it does, I'm still thrilled to see that you sort of get the same experience here uh, with such an important app like this, again, because marking up PDFs and doing basic photo edits is stuff, you know, we all have to do from time to time, and I'm so happy that it's a refreshing experience, even at this size once again. But anyway, last but certainly not least, and maybe not the most relevant, but I gotta say it or talk about it, I love liquid glass. Maybe you don't, but I will say it is very Apple-like. It draws upon the skeuomorphic versions of iOS, like iOS 6 here, and even iOS 1 and 2 and 3, and also versions of OS 10, you know, that aqua vibe. And I love it, it brings this sort of nostalgia back, but in a fresh way that doesn't completely overwrite Johnny Ives' wonderful flat look that we got with iOS 7 here. And if you don't believe me, maybe it's easier to show you like an iPhone 16e here next to an iPhone 5. Two devices that kind of remind me of each other. I put the backgrounds, or I made the background on here the same as the default one in iOS 6 with the iPhone 5 here. And as you can see, there is a lot of resemblance. Again, it's not one-to-one. -one. I mean, like if you open like music, for example, it's gonna be a very different look, but the glass just sort of, you know, resembles some elements of this more static, skeuomorphic iOS 6 and previous versions, but I love that. So if you've been missing this for years, this is just something that brings this experience, you know, together more and adds to all of the wonderful features that we went over in this video. Anyway, maybe you care, maybe you don't. I also just love showing off old devices like this. I do that a lot here on this channel, so subscribe for that if you want to. And that about wraps up this video here. Overall, I am very pleased with the experience here at this form factor. It surprised me a lot, even though I was initially skeptical. So definitely, um, you know, consider the iPad mini if you are interested in iPad OS 26. It is a wonderful experience, especially with preview. Like I said, I really love the fact that, you know, they brought these full fledged features even to an iPad of this size. So definitely consider buying one of these, especially if it gets even better or bigger. And also too, like I said, maybe this is sort of a glimpse into what a foldable iPhone would look like. It would run some kind of hybrid iOS, iPad OS operating system. I'm sure they'd be like, this is the first Apple device to ever run two OSs at the same time, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, check out my link to Hover Air once again. That drone is so cool. Like I, I was shocked how easy it was to use. And I mean, the shots that I got with that thing are just insane. So definitely take advantage of that Prime Day deal before the end of the day today. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.